Crozza. Today we are doing a lesson in clay. Um, we're going to be using some air dry clay. Um, this is Oz clay from Zart. Um, I've tried a few different air dry clays before and so far that one has been the most successful. I find some of them can be very dry and crumbly and others can smell really bad. But so far, um, I would recommend this. So that's two kilos there and you can get that um, from the Zart Art website. It's not very expensive. Um, I can pop that in the video later. Um, today I'm going to show you a couple of techniques, um, hand building techniques. I'm going to show you a pinch pot and then I'm going to show you how to join two pin pinch pots together. Um, so you end up with a hollow sphere, which you can turn into lots of other things, and some decorative ideas as well. I'm going to switch the camera over now and show you things that you need for this, um, and then talk you through a couple of little activities on how to use air dry clay. As I said, you will need to get some air dry clay. Air dry means that the clay doesn't need to be fired in a kiln and will go hard in air. Um, this one here again is by Zart Art. So you'll need some air dry clay. A couple of other things you're going to need is some water in a container where you can get your fingers in. A couple of different knives um, to cut the clay. Something I find really useful is an old um, toothbrush. Um, and I'll show you later what that is used for. And the other thing I like to use are some different clay tools. Now, you don't necessarily need these. I just happen to have them. But if you look at the shapes of these, you could use um, cutlery. So small spoons, little forks. These are really good for making different indentations and patterns in the clay, but not essential. But I would highly recommend you having these couple of things ready to go. And lastly, I'm going to work onto this plastic tablecloth here so that I'm not getting clay stuck into the table because um, obviously clay can be a little bit messy. So make sure that you've got something down on your surface so that you're not going to spread clay all over the kitchen table. This is the clay. It's a white clay, which is really good because it's easy then to paint with acrylic paint. Um, and what we will need is to cut off a small piece. Now you can use your knife. If you were in a studio, you might have a wire that you can slice this with, but a knife is absolutely fine. Just break off a a blob about about that big I suppose maybe that's even a bit big now because this is air dry clay always wrap up the bits that you aren't using in plastic to keep it from drying out when you're not needing it so this clay here is really soft it's quite um, malleable I've actually got way too much there, so I'm just going to break it off. We'll just use that much. So the first thing you will need to do, we're going to make a pinch pot first, is to get your clay into a nice bowl. And you can use the palm of your hand and you can also use your table and try and get it into fairly good ball shape. So there's my little ball, sort of a large golf ball size I suppose. You can make them any size you like but I haven't got a heap of clay so I don't want to make it too big. Now I'm going to use our thumb and just place it into the clay. I'm not going to push it too far because I don't want it to come through the other side. And then using my thumb on the inside and my fingers and palm of my hand on the outside. I'm just going to slowly squeeze a little pot. Now, once it gets a bit bigger, you can start moving out with more fingers. 
and I'm keeping the palm of my hand on the bottom there so that I'm getting a nice little bottom rather than having a really thick part down the bottom and thin walls. So I'm just slowly smoothing out the inside and turning it as I go. And then you can see I've got a little pot. Now you'll notice if I bring it up close, you can see the clay is already starting to crack a little. Um, it's quite warm in here and the heat of my hands is also causing that. A tiny, tiny little bit of water will moisten that enough so it doesn't crack anymore. Be careful not to use too much water because you'll end up with slime and not a nice smooth sticky clay, which is what we're looking for. The water is quite good to smooth out those imperfections. Now, you don't want the sides of your clay to get too thin because once it dries, they will be very fragile or they'll crack before it even dries. So I'm pretty happy with that there. Now you can keep the top of the bottle a little bit organic and natural if you wanted to. You could slice it with a knife so that it was really even, but I don't mind it being a little bit organic in nature. Gonna smooth out that bottom a little bit more so it's got a nice flat surface to sit on. And there you go. That is a really, really simple air dry clay pinch pot. Now you could do some really cool things with this if you wanted to. You could start adding patterns using different tools. Um, you, if you make a mistake, you just basically smooth it back into the clay with the water. You can create a decorative edge maybe by pushing down little pieces like that with your tools. Um, there's limitless ideas on how you could decorate your little pot. Alright, so that's our first little task is a very very basic hand built pinch pot. Um, I'm not going to smooth this out too much because I'm going to need it for the next little part of my video. Um, so this is really only half of what I need to do. So now I have two pinch pots. One's a little smaller than the other, that's okay. Um, same process, I've just made two walking past, that's why the light keeps changing. Oh. Um, Alright, so once you have your two pinch pots, we're going to look at joining these together, which will create a oval or a round shape, which will be hollow. Now, there's a couple of reasons why you might do this. Firstly, it saves clay. So if you were making a large sculpture, um, having it hollow means that you aren't using up a heap of clay. The other, th the other thing is um, it'll be heaps lighter um, using a hollow technique. Um, if you were using actual clay to be applied, you most definitely would have to make anything sort of bigger than this hollow. Otherwise, when you fire it, um, it will explode in the kiln. We don't fire this, but it's a really good process to get to understand how to make something hollow. So it's a technique that then you can use when you are working with um, clay that you would fire. So I've made my two little pinch pots. You can make these as big as you like, obviously. I've just made them quite small for this video. Now this is where our toothpaste, or toothbrush, sorry, comes in. What we need to do is create a bit of a slip. So I just like, you can mix slip, but I don't like to waste the clay. So just rubbing a little bit of clay onto your brush, um, toothbrush, and it's fairly wet. So kind of what we're doing is making a bit of a clay glue. And this is what I call the, the Velcro technique. 
which is absolutely not a technical term whatsoever, but it's something that helps me remember. I'm going to then brush around the edges of my pinch pots and you can see that's making a bit of a, a texture there. What I'm calling the Velcro technique is because you do it on both and it kind of sticks them together. It's a bit like Velcro sticking, hooks of Velcro sticking together. And adding that, that little bit of slip or clayey paintbrush really helps. It's a bit of a crack there. Yeah, just... All right. Now, something to help these stay together is I would stuff them with something. Now, if you had newspaper, use that. I don't have any newspaper, I'm just going to use a little bit of paper towel. This is going to be placed into our clay to help it hold its form so it doesn't sort of collapse. If this was to fire, be fired, um, because of the firing process, we put it in a kiln that's very, very hot, the paper would just burn away. So that's why we would be using paper if it was real clay. Um, but you can use whatever you like. If you don't want to use paper towel, you could use foil, um, newspaper, whatever you've got on hand. So then we're, we're going to join those two pots together. Now this is a little bit tricky. It takes a bit of practice. You're going to sort of squeeze them lightly. So they kind of join together a little bit. And then we're going to work around with a little bit of water. Hopefully they should be joining because we've used our scoring technique with the toothbrush. And we're just sort of pushing them together. If you do have tools or a bread and butter knife would work, um, you can use that to sort of scrape the clay together and smooth it off. I might use my tools as I have there, but I would like to say bread and butter. Knife would work well. That's fine. It would be fine. So I'm just working my way around my little air dry clay hollow ball. Got to be a little bit careful here that you're not squeezing or pushing your tools too hard because you'll end up putting a hole in it. So you're just working away quite lightly my hands. And you can see how it's already starting to form a, a nice oval. And that was only using a tiny little bit of clay rather than a big blob of clay. So you'll save a lot on your clay use if you are to be making things hollow. Um, it's also a really important technique to learn when you're using clay to be fine. So I'm just using my hand to smooth over those little gaps. I'm trying to make it as joint as I can. And there you go. That is how you join two pinch pots together to create a hollow ball.
have a range of different little pinch pop creations from air dry clay which I'll let dry probably for about 24 hours till they're as hard as um, fired clay and then you will be able to use acrylic paint to paint them and seal them with a um, gloss sealant or a spray gloss so I'll just give you a bit of a close look I've used lots of different tools to create different decorative surfaces put little feet onto that one um, flat plate taller ones with some different textures so I just played around with that same technique of using a pinch pot to begin with um, and just used a whole whole heap of different mark making techniques and um, textures to decorate so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial on air dry clay there's so many things that you can do with this stuff um, I highly recommend that brand Oz clay um, for working with clay at home um, and I might even do a video uh, later to show you how to paint and decorate these once they've dried. Um, hope you enjoy. Bye for now.